Hey, good afternoon, morning, evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Oak Island Research Channel for a new video today. I'm so excited about what I'm gonna show you. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about it. You know, it's about the flood tunnel maps, but I'm gonna let you discover what I discovered. And I'm pretty amazed of what it is. So I've, it could be a breakthrough, though I must admit uh, it lacks a backup of physical proof, but nevertheless, let me tell you about what I found there because it's uh, it's still pretty amazing. Let's have a look. So in the last episodes, we reinforced confidence, let's put it this way, in the fact that the Rochefoucauld Grail manuscript was connected to Oak Island. And we were working on this picture, uh, collaborative work from the initial Spark idea from Gary, uh, nicknamed Gasbo on our subscribers, uh, both, uh, uh, both Michael and I. And uh, also Michael and I work on it, completing the, the model and, and giving a meaning to it compared to uh, the geometry of the island. Uh, after thinking about it, this picture, which already revealed the journey across the Atlantic to Oak Island from Europe, which got a triple reading level, as I explained in my past video, actually does not indicate nothing. It just shows location of very important and interesting points as revealed by Michael and I's work uh, when we're working on the Zina Halpern's map. So that that's just stunning that this picture, which is 800 years old, mind you, is already talking about Oak Island and, and revealing all the uh, specific points, but it doesn't tell you anything more. So is there anything else those pictures and miniatures get to, to bring to our attention and our mind? Of course. <laughs> and, and what I decided to do is to use, Michael calls it a protocol, but at least a, a methodology after what we learned from the past videos. Just making a quick sound check. You know, I do that sometimes. Sorry, just to make sure it's recording fine. Yeah, it is. Okay. So what I'm going to use now as tools, since we noticed that the frame of the miniature may propose construction lines. This is my version, and it's an old version of the interpretation of the picture. Michael's got a, an upgraded model now. Uh, but uh, and, and definitely on his model, the frames do play an important role. So that's interesting. And we may or we uh, let's allow ourselves to reuse this concept in other paintings to see if it gives anything. The second one is, of course, and that was a revelation uh, when studying these uh, is the glares of the characters and they are used to point at very specific point, especially at the null and crosses points. And we are going to use those glaring um, concepts that the painter used uh, again and again to see if we can reveal more places, points of interest, especially linked with Nolan's Cross. Obviously, that's how it worked on this one. Nolan Cross is involved as the reference line here. It is the line on which we projected. Uh, I think a cat wants to go outside, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. So um, the circle here, which is the riddle part that we have to work out as you discover from our works, um, is pushing points onto Norton's Cross. So Norton's Cross is used as also a reference line uh, because it's it's a great one and it's the one they used on the island all over as we discovered with Zina Halpern's map and even other researchers work are using Nolan Cross as kind of a, a master scale and a figure, geometric figure shape that is used to um, point to other points on the island. So I think it's a fair assumption to use Nolan Cross as a reference line in those painting also, also when Nolan Cross appear. Feet are involved, at least in this picture. I'm sure in others they mean something, and I have not decoded fully interpretation on other paintings, but I got the feeling, intuition, or kind of guts feeling that feet 
are involved in those pictures, especially for measurements, especially since we call it a foot. Even in French, it's a pied, which means a foot, that distance. So it's not stupid to think, it's not unreasonable to think that those guys use the feet to code feet. <laughs> Yeah, only Rochefoucauld Grail are hiding clues. Believe me, I've tried and I worked it for now a couple of years uh, on all the uh, available pictures on, on the website issued from the libraries and the scans. And it's only the Rochefoucauld Grail. And it only me maybe on top of that only selected picture. But so far, the one we've been given, the only small sample given on the net have been, have been extremely uh, efficient in producing results link with Oak Island. Coding techniques clues, how at least part of the coding is happening. And I think it's the first clue they give you to start your work on each miniature is what's at the bottom corner of the picture in each, the four of them. They differ from one picture to the other. I thought originally it was the signature of the painter but I got it wrong, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. The, also, the, the, the borders differ from a picture to the other, and I think there's clues about it. Maybe here the clue was waves. It's not obvious, of course, now that we know it's about a journey. We, it could be waves, especially in blue. But Michael used, uh, he used the uh, side uh, indicator. It's like, yeah, use those dots. You see, they put dots on the four corners here. It's pretty obvious. And, and, and that means something, we think, or I think. Uh, finally, and that's new, it's a single painter that produced all the Rochefoucauld Grail miniatures from page 20 to page 200. How do I know that? Because I read between the lines. No, I didn't read between the lines. I read the fine prints, the small one nobody reads, on the Lancelot Grail project webpage. Uh, pretty much, uh, it's the it's the, uh, the the work revealed of Alison Professor Alison Stones, who uh, uh, allowed me to use this picture uh, in high def and sent it to me by email. And I cannot thank her enough because otherwise we'd be still at square one with the Rochefoucauld Grand miniatures. She started something without knowing, and she studied the painting styles. And, and I'll do a video about it because I think I've got some definite suspects names of who painted those they're never signed you can't find a signature at the bottom but by analyzing hundreds of them she concluded that the Rochefoucauld Grail miniature most of them were from the single hand actually she detected three painters and she's able to give the areas in the manuscript on which each of them worked and I'll do a video about it but Take my word for granted for now. There was a single painter, which is very interesting because if we play Colombo a little bit, um, it's, a, it's a very important indication. Was it a team working on it with like a leader and apprentice? Was it? No, it was a single guy. They were freelancers. It's not like a school of 100 monks and copyists and stuff. No, they were freelancers. Uh, anybody could ask for their service. They were private people. But again, I'll do a video about it later. So these are my, this is my toolbox now. And uh, the assumption behind all this is if I was a painter and using coding techniques, I would tend to reproduce them and use a set of coding techniques around my painting. Um, and finally, some of them may have triple meanings, right? We're working on the, on the face value. What do I see if I am not interested in Oak Island? I see a picture, okay? Uh, link to the Grail and the story of the, the Grail, fair enough. Uh, second reading, we see there's geometry hidden in some of them, in most of them, maybe all of them. And third meaning, which I found second, actually, was the journey uh, coded to the Atlantic, uh, which I still believe is in there. I, I, I got no doubt it's a triple reading picture. So here we're going to study today two miniatures. Uh, which are issued from the Rochefoucauld Grail collection when it was photographed in 2010 uh, because it was about to be sold at the auction by Sotheby in Great Britain, sold for $2.4 million, uh, which is in the top 10 most costly book on earth. Isn't that amazing? 
Isn't that amazing? Who bought it? Who was interested enough to buy it? Was it somebody who was purely speculating on books to be able to sell them? Was it a, an art lover, a millionaire, multimillionaire art lover who knew that this was so well preserved? Was it somebody who knew something was coded in it? I'm thinking about somebody, but I'm not telling now. <laughs> you know, and you know who that somebody is, all of you. All right, so this picture here um, was shot in uh, uh, by Jay Norman. I've, it's, it's actually a, a Sotheby's picture that's available on the net. It's, it, the, the definition is okay. It was not given by uh, Professor Stone. She only gave me two pictures, and it's not one of them. And here it's Joseph of Arimathea. Uh, he was walking on the water holding the Holy Grail. So you can see the Holy Grail in a kind of a gray jar with some smoke, I guess. And you have five children or three children and two i don't know teachers on the right hand side i don't know what they're doing they're stepping on his robe over the water so he's not the one walking over the water or well actually he's got his left foot in the water but uh they are walking on his robe which is kind of strange and peculiar and again the look at already look at the the glares this guy is looking up the Joseph of Arimathea here is looking up at something. And when I first, well, not when I first saw that be lying, but there is something very peculiar in this one. You can almost see them. Look at here, the borders. This is like water and something blue here. It's blue, etc. Here you got something like this. Look at the one on our picture, the borders, the borders. It's a, this is, I think it's the only one with those type of borders. And what do borders do? Lines and dots. You know that game you find in newspaper somehow where, you know, they give you dot one, two, three, four, and you have to connect them so that a, a figure comes up, like a boat. I don't know how you call that in English, like dot to dot. No, I asked Michael, he said it's not the word. Connect the dot? Maybe. Because if I was doing this instead, as a pattern, right? I was definitely connecting the dots. I think that's what they want us to do, connect the dots. What dots? Well, we got a clue from the last works we did, the eyes, connect the eyes. But I did connect the eyes. No, you were looking at the glares where those characters were looking at themselves. You did not connect their eyes one to the other, right? Well, yes, indeed, we used the, the, the glares and we didn't connect the eye one to the other. But I think here, that's what they want us to do. So let's try using us our techniques on this. So I put it now full page. And the first technique I'm going to use is, of course, the border, just to check if there's anything in particular. So this is the, the border. I chose to use the mm, black corners because they were very well defined when these were not really on the side. So it's it i could be all wrong just because doing this i could kill the angles but actually you're gonna see that on this picture the construction lines are useless we don't use them later but they're there because i'm applying my technique now the second technique is the glares so the main character here is joseph of arimacia and he's looking up and that's that's what i i can do it again for you to better see that i'm respecting the glare uh, exactly the line I zoomed in a lot this character is looking is crossing the the site of Joseph of Arimathea and this character here is also looking up I didn't use those and you will see I'll use, I use the three others later but that's the the main glares you can get there's only three of them and what do I have next next I'm just connecting the dots now one dot to the other the dots being the eyes so one dot here, it's going up, it's coming to that character, and I'm going left now, and, I, and, and the three eyes are aligned. This one is tiny little bit off, we're going here, and finally there. And that's it, because this picture is simple, and, and what it gives is amazing. But um, yeah, that's, that, that's what we have. What else to say? Uh, let me think. Yeah, I added also, uh, on Joseph of Arimathea here you can see it the orange the orange bar here is just the end of his hat 
uh, because I found out it was meaningful at the end. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, it's strange that those fish are going under like in a tunnel, right? Something like this. You see me coming. Okay, that's that all I wanted to share on this one. Yes. So let's see when. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. The second thing I want you to, to see is this. When I use a compass and I center it on the line, I get 60 degrees. 60 degrees being the Nolan's Cross orientation to True North on the island, 3060. So this is my hint, or this is the clue to me that this yellow line going through the eye of Joseph of Arimathea might very well be Nolan's Cross reference. And I just need to overlay this to Nolan's Cross, get the other reference points probably coming from the eye glares of the other characters so I can scale my Nolan Cross and my picture on it and reveal what the red line give. Mm-hmm. Ready? Okay, so this is the now my reference map that Michael provided me. Uh, I'm missing the historical money pit, but the historical money pit is in is in this region, right? Some somewhere like this. So we you can see here, of course, if you acquainted to our videos, you got now Nolan's Cross here, of course. Here it is. The extension point, come uh, same distance here. The anchors on top and on the left hand side, the west part of the island. We get some very important points. The set point is uh, a point that's virtual, or we think it is, but it's been revealed by several physical on the ground markers, as well as both uh, Rochefoucauld Grail, the previous picture we study. We call it Folio 202 now because it is our, our official reference. Official reference is MS1 Folio 202 Verso V. But uh, we'll talk about Folio 202 for the, the picture we Gasbo uh, revealed to us. So the set points here. Triangle helps calculating the west uh, and side points because of the uh, parallelogram figure you get. Uh, right? So, uh, or is it called E? Sorry. Uh, and I'm looking for this parallelogram, of course, in the picture, as you can bet. The valve is the back, uh, back flush valve. You can close or open to relieve the uh, the, the, the vault from uh, the vault is here from all the water and the trapdoor is here where obviously you can flush inside or um, there's two theories you, you get an empty cavern underneath and you can flush like 30 times 40 times before it gets totally um, filled with water and jammed or you can just use a tide system that will suck the water out naturally you don't need to actually use an underground cave and um, the uh, as Michael proposed, or the obvious, we, we, we know from the seven pieces puzzle that there must be some water, probably from the five drain here. There's some water that sorry, that must uh, probably go well, what can't I uh, probably goes to La Hamp because La Hamp is, is like a, a dam you can uh, close or open. So, there must be some water here. If the MP is here, there must be some, you know, maybe we, we know that through the uh, through the yeah, I, 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 I got it wrong. Sorry. So something like what is it then straight from the original point? Is it going to the money pit? Because this is the cave in pit here, caved in, caved in pit. Uh, and we know the, 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 the tunnel is going through there. But what we know also is that La Hampe uh, must connect then one way or another to the vault, which must connect one way or another to the valve, which connects one way or another to the trapdoor here. Well, what I discovered is that it's not exactly this. It's even more smarter, but mm, that's the minimum, <laughs> minimum viable um, way of making the vault operate up and down, right? All right, but it's not exactly what's happening. It's even better what I found. So let's position what we found on the previous picture to this. I was quite amazed by so this is the this is a uh, Joseph of Arimathea's uh, glare right, and it registers of course it's a line I aligned it on purpose, sixty degrees naturally aligns on Snowden's cross. What's remarkable, that's the end of his hat, that's the glare of one of the kid, the glare of one of the other kid, that's the white white is okay. The convention is white lines are construction lines from the painting. Yellow is the glares, 
and red is the dot to dot connect the eye, right? That's my convention. And again, registers naturally and beautifully uh, 510 in 29 extension. And what's happening at La Hampe? Wow, that's amazing what's happening at La Hampe. At La Hampe, I got a bend. What a better place to change direction than the place to put a dam or a lock or something. Wow. And um, it goes through the uh, um, caved in pit. When you see, a, when you look at graphs or other, you see people sketched it as it was directly going to the MP, something like this, right? Straight line with the with the five on the right, the five, uh, the five uh, uh, box to capture the water. I don't know because yes, yes, through the through the the, the caved-in pit it goes, but was it going up down? I don't think anybody ever dug up the full uh, the full uh, canal or the full tunnel till the end. Uh, they found, of course, the beginning, and then it's a projection straight to the money pit. And I don't think that's exactly the case. But this could be wrong and offset by a couple of degrees, I admit it, but it looks pretty good because it takes the water. Of course, the water level was a bit lower at the time, but I can extend that line to the border of the picture if I want. And here, what's interesting is La Hampe and all the corresponding points on the on the Rochefort Grail. So that's 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 interesting, I think. Let's carry on our investigation. When I overlay now the picture from which this uh, sketch comes from, if you look at Joseph of Arimathea, here is color neck, right? If I remove the picture, it's exactly the eye of the swamp. And uh, we can see him, Joseph of Arimathea, with this color neck uh, object item ornament on other pictures of the Rochefoucauld Grail. So I'll investigate if it is not a marker of the or a convention to mark the eye of the swamp. Or is it just a coincidence? I don't know. Okay. There's something called the Beringer Survey. And the Beringer Survey is a, is a documented um, ultrasound and magnetic. I don't know. I can't remember what they use. But they basically came up with uh, this picture where you see the money pit here and they suspect by uh, their uh, equipment that the flood tunnel's direction is here. They put a question mark though. That comforts me in thinking that nobody ever dug it up till the end. This is the caved in pit here, right here, right? Caved in pit. Uh, the shore must be right there, I guess, not far. And 10x is here. What's interesting, I'm gonna change color, sorry. I'm gonna use uh, what could be good here. Uh, red is already used, so let's use some, some blue, dark blue. What's interesting here is the legend. The, uh, the big thick black lines are major electrical conductors. That's the result of their survey. There's no <laughs> electricity going down there. But because it conducts, they think there's tunnel because there's void. So there's better or worse conduction. I don't know. So they think that's this tunnel. And here, major look with surface pipes or rails because maybe there's some, I don't know, iron in it. I don't know. What are these? Because these are going to be important soon. You see these? Are they like also like pipes because they are less thick? So they're not like tunnels, but could be pipes. Um, because when I overlay what we found, Sorry, it's coming back. I need to go back, 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 back. Yes, that's the best positioning I could find. So the red line is the dot to dot connect the little kids on the picture. That's my red plain line, which matches what they think is the uh, flood tunnel underneath and going out of the the, 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 the cave pit, the cave in pit. But I've got a bend here. That bend is diverting that tunnel from the direction of the money pit, but is catching back on this one, the thin one. So what's happening there? Is it indeed a deviation where you get two flow, one going to the main main uh, vault, because this is going to be connected to the vault someday, I guess, and one going to the money pit to flood it like a booby trap? I'm starting to think about another theory that basically the money pit was not there and was not part of, of the original construction. It came later, probably as a decoy. But I think those two things are not related exactly. And there was that comment I read from Rick Lagina 
that said, in, in on this island, you find several waves <coughs> of centuries of construction. And the money pit area, when they analyzed the wood, the nails, the everything they found around the money pit itself, dates something f from 1500 to uh, 1650 or something like that, like the French or the English were there. But when they look at the swamp, when they analyze by sediment, carrot um, digging, how the swamp settled, they found human disruption around 1250, which matches a bit better the Rochefoucauld Grail revealing all this. So I'm starting myself to brainstorm and think that two things happened there, but the money pit is, I don't find any reference about a money pit in, in the Rochefoucauld Grail. I found reference about pretty much everything else, but this. And, and the dates don't match. The dates, the money pit, the wood, the everything they find there is not 1200. The only thing 1200 they found was <coughs> some relics and some artifacts and the swamp. So maybe uh, the money pit, somebody later, uh, because somebody later may have used this point and divert the flow of water and, and created the booby trap named the money pit. And that comforts me in another idea that the oak entrance has got nothing to do with the money pit and Michael was right and I was wrong at the beginning but we'll come to that later uh, this is another picture from Hammerson Speeder I think from his, his videos uh, trying to look at what it would give it's not very informative it's just another way of looking at it and that concludes the first section of this presentation we're gonna go now to a second picture because we gotta finish the job this second picture is not available on the set of photographs given by Sotheby during the auction. It's a picture that's uh, it's actually the first main page, the entry page of the Lancelot Grail project. And on this picture, uh, the this castle falls on the duke who killed King Lancelot, poor guy. And very interesting picture. I I, I try to work it out. You bet. When I was working on the uh, on the uh, uh, the signature from Davency and stuff, uh, I thought it was revealed here. Actually, it's kinda, but I don't think that's the purpose. Um, the purpose is different. Let's have a look. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Oops, something's wrong with the video. Oh yeah, I know why. Excuse me. What I need to do is go back to presentation mode. Otherwise, I'm ruining one hour of work. Okay, so this picture. Uh, the first thing I did is this. The main character of the picture, the main character seems to be this guy and his color is flashy so you can see him, he's right in the middle. You would think he's doing some kind of gymnastic, artistic, huge figure there, but actually his, his, his legs are here, right? And it's that guy behind who is stretching his leg behind. Nevertheless, it gives the optical illusion of a kind of a compass where I can measure distance. On top of that, this guy here, the, the shape he's doing with his finger is kind of a distance he's giving. That's interesting. Uh, would that guy give us a distance? Nolan Cross could be in, interpreted now as a distance because we know its dimension from the last analysis of the picture. We know they knew how to get the dimension of Nolan Cross. Here I can't find any checkerboard or anything so far that reveals what is this distance, but I believe, or what is this distance, but I believe something is at play there. But that could come from another video. Another thing interesting here is this castle is collapsing and uh, check the red, the red balls on top, or however you want to call them, the bulbs or the bulbs. Check the corner of our picture. You know, that's how we work. Look at this. A square and a dot in the middle. So dots going to be important. Dots are the eyes. Okay, we're going to use that. But it seems here there are re-emphasis on the use of the dots or the little circles. What else is interesting? The characters. Those guys has got weird face embedded one in the other, but I don't know. This guy has got a weird face also. This character here scares me. He's spooky. He looks angry. Like they made his nose, his nose very, very pointy, and, and he's got his big eye, and oh, and he's the only one who's got that type of hat. Are they drawing our attention to him? 
Yes, they are. I'm going to tell you why in a second. So the main character here, where, wh what is he looking at? Uh, I, I discovered, but that was last year, that, that his eye is aligned exactly with the, uh, with the uh, rooftop here. And when we do that, and it, the alignment is very good, we see that on that little bubble here, a bulb or circle or bowl, whatever you want to call it, it's tangent. They made it on purpose that they could have drawn this here, but no, it's kind of the indication that on the glares, you're going to have to play with tangent when it comes playing with the red balls here. Okay. What are my other techniques I use? Let's do all the glares. And this gentleman here, his glare is also tangent to this ball. Interesting. This gentleman here, at the moment, his glare is not giving us anything. Okay, let's wait. More glares. Because it's a construction line, I'm using the corner, and I realize that when I use this corner and I'm using this eye, I'm tangenting this ball. So is it another indication we're on the right track? We're on the kind of they're giving us hints on the corners and they want us to use it to prove that the work we've been doing so far is good. When I connect the corner to this eye, I reach exactly the tangent of the ball, just like the tangent of the red ball from the main character. Let's carry on. The main character's glare, uh, glare, uh, glare oh, sorry, himself registers this corner, which is also kind of an indication we're on the right way from the conceptors. And we can see tangents the fingers here. Interesting. It's like they're backing up our work by multiple checks that we're on the right track. What else do we have? This gentleman here, and when I connect his eye here to this corner here, I register this point, which gets now a triple, triple cross. And um, I'm going to use, of course, the black line here. As you see, that's why I kept it blind uh, as the Nolan's cross. This is almost 60 degrees. Uh, it's uh, the, the eyes. I can't cheat because I, uh, if I wanted to bend it this way, it wouldn't meet the eyes anymore. So I can't cheat, but the angle is 65 degrees this time. So we're going to have, when we overlay, we're going to have to rotate the picture by five degrees so that it registers perfectly to Nolan's cross. But the black line is Nolan's cross, and this is kind of a point of interest. Let's carry on. I'm going to play dot to dot now because I learned that technique in the former folio. So this eye to that eye to this eye to that eye to this eye, etc. Oh, they are aligned and the guys here and one more for his other. But I'm going to just, since he's looking at his hands and his fingertips, I'm going to dot line. It's not, it's not connected, but I'm just projecting the glares onto the dot line here. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Ah, oh, I forgot. Yeah, sorry again. <laughs> post -pro There's no post production on this video. It's live, right? It's called live video. Okay, let's go back. I was doing this. I was there. Here we are. Sorry. So again, let's pay attention to this gentleman here at the back, the scary one. Look at the eyes of the others. They got like one dot for their. Uh, pupil for their, for, you know, the center of the eye. Here, they made a, a big black eye to this guy because he's very angry. A big black eye in a big circle. Like, pay attention to this. So I'm thinking, and that was a discovery from today. I, when I showed my preliminary work, works to, to Michael, I didn't have that in-house. But let's, let's say, okay, the bubbles play a role. So he's connected to those bubbles. By the tangent, I could have hit the center. I could have hit no. If I learned from the others, and that's I think it's going to be a recurrent move now. I learned from the past playing with those. I learned it was the bottom tangent that they want us to use, and that's mandatory because of the main character's first look. Because you don't have a choice. If you wanna, if you wanna embrace the rooftop, you're gonna hit the bottom of the ball, meaning it's the lower tangent. So let's use this convention, lower tangent lower tangent and I'm connecting the other eyes the big bubbles and the tangent underneath and the tangent underneath okay so I'm going to use Norton's cross the black line as the reference 
I'm going to use some point of interest here to go to size it. And we're going to see what it gives. So again, I'm using that picture from Mike. Thanks, Mike. And that's what happens when you overlay Nolan's cross, the black line as Nolan's cross. You're using this as your reference, which is poor. I agree. There's something could be better. But what is so interesting is that those red lines, when you do that, connect from La Hamp, which is the point we left our first drawing at. And La Hamp, you're indeed going to the vault by the dotted lines. Where is the vault starting? Somewhere here. All right. So that works. Moreover, that's so interesting here. There is a connection with the eye of the swamp. It's going right by or near or next to the, the eye of the swamp. And if I was to build a tunnel underneath and I need a vertical shaft access, I wouldn't build my vertical shaft access on top of my works. I would build it on the side so I can send my material down and they can use it uh, going their way, but I would not disturb. So <laughs> interesting. Very interesting also is the diversion here, not expected. Because when you're thinking, well, I'll do that later. I'll analyze the, the full picture later. Um, so that's, that's pretty interesting. Another thing that killed me is that it connects to the valve. Of course it does. It has to. <laughs> because it's the, it's the tunnel with the water. So you want to block it or open it and release it to, to, to what? To the trap door here. That's where your release mechanism is. So when I join the two pictures together, I'll show you in a minute. Okay, yeah, without the construction lines, that's what it gives. And that's that's pretty amazing. And that would need that would mean they don't need to have that tunnel here. They didn't choose that option to have from the ocean to the hump, to the vault, to the valve, to the exit. They didn't. They chose another way, and we're gonna see why in a minute. So what happens when I join the two pictures together? Because they bring the same concept. When I join the two pictures together, this is the total and complete path that those flood tunnel take. And interesting that they make the liaison at La Hampe, so important La Hampe is. That's where they made the match and the meat of the two. And at the end of my first, okay, this is an eye on the first picture and an eye on the second picture and an eye on the third picture and an eye. They made the eye connect. They didn't need those extra eye on the side, but you know, we humans got two eyes, so I had to play it. Well, they decided to make a, a straight line to tell us you're on the right. That's how you connect the two. And I, I find that amazing, amazing. So the idea here is, yeah, the water is captured here and La Hamp is a, I'll, I'll let you in or out. And what happens is if it's high tide, you will fill in the vault with water blocking the access. And if you, uh, block the valve here then and block La Hampe here then, the system is not giving water away anymore. It's closed there at those places. And the high tide would be always at the vault. So actually you could release by this concept, you can open La Hampe and if it's low tide, it should evacuate back to the ocean this way. You could have two evacuation points, but to capture it, you need to block both of them. Uh, is there here a one-way valve that only allows ocean water to go this direction? It's possible. Maybe they don't want to reflux this way and the mandatory reflux by this way. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. But the slightly, the design is not the one I expected. I really expected now you're here and you're going straight there. And they didn't take that choice. They made a U like a, like a dead end. This is a dead end and you got water in and you got uh, water out. And if you block both, the water stays. That's, that's a killer design. I didn't think of it. I'm not sure what it brings more. Well, I've got a clue about why they made it that way and didn't want to do it straight. We'll see that later. Um, so I was explaining just this minute. Uh, I'll get back to that white line. Well, let me talk about that white line now. Now, we know from, or we know, the, the La Formule says that from La Hampe to the vault, there is a corridor. And if we go straight line on that corridor, that's the path it would take. 
And very interestingly, you get kind of a connection point here between the water tunnel and the walk-in corridor. And is it a checkpoint when they're building it? Were they building from La Honda direction, here that direction, to make things easy they w or faster? They would do from several, I don't know. But it's very interesting. You've got a kind of a, a meeting point here. And of course, if you got a crossing point, it means the elevation at this very point, elevation, altitude, underground of the uh, tunnel is different from the corridor. Otherwise, you would flood your corridor. So <clears throat> here you got the, uh, the valve here on so the water inlet is here um it goes and get blocked by la hampe so one blocker it reach and 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 the second is the exit valve now again we've been saying that saying that many many times this is a schematic this is a explain you operation of the device kind of picture i don't think it's accurate oh, of course it's not accurate neither in size but it's not either accurate in the uh, exact mm -hmm. Uh, pipeline age it uses to re realize this this it would have been too hard to draw so here we have one two three devices and i think that's that's what the picture tells us the picture tells us that the valve tunnel and the hump tunnel are always connected unless there is a specific valve here so the tunnel after la hump is connected to the tunnel after uh uh, b before the uh, the valve and and this is just a one way feeding water into the the principal and it works exactly the same it would achieve the same result it's just a design option they took instead of having a a single continuous trail they made a one and two that's the way they made it and here they made there so that's very interesting because if it's true and Seriously, the fact it picks the water here, it goes through the uh, the, 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 the pit, it reaches La Hampe. It connects then to the vault by those dot to dot I connect and it reaches the valve. I mean, pfft. am I a paradolia or come on, did they really code it? I think they really coded it. That's amazing. And that's amazing because it reveals it's not our first intuition the way those tunnels work. They made a... Uh, they made a, a, a goose po, we call it in French. I don't know how you say it, but they here you get a di diversion of the of the flow. But it reaches straight to the valve. That's incredible. Why did it take why did it take the north part? The north part? Why didn't it go there? Let me give you a proposal. Proposal is when you look at Google Earth and I don't have all those markers because I don't have the uh, library Michael's got with all his work. He's been I've been working with PowerPoint. Uh, it has been working more with uh, Google Earth, but we know it's around here, right? It's around that place here, and you want to reach the valve, which is around lot 5 here. Look at the elevation here. It's in meters. I uh, don't know how. Can I change the... I can, I think... Uh, put it in feet. Casualty navigation general, probably. Or bear with me in meters. It's okay. It's just multiply by 3 every time I say meter if you want to get feet. The idea is not precision here. The idea is to say the elevation, if I want to go to a straight line, my elevation is 8 to 9 meters, which is 24 to, uh, let's say, roughly 30 feet, 20 to 35 feet digging to install that pipe. Let's pretend the, there are two islands at the time they build it. So if I now go back, if, if I make my junction, ju junction point or diversion point near the eye of the swamp, my elevation is zero because the eye of the swamp is at the same elevation of the water. Now, if there was no eye of the swamp because there was no swamp because there was two islands, I would be at the ocean level. And it's easier if you, have, if you want to carry water under pressure, pressure created by the ocean elevation at high tide, the less you dig down, First, it's easier because the less you have to dig, and second, the less pressure you put on your pipe because you're in a higher elevation. You can even go to the to, to, to higher than the ocean level by a siphon principle. That's that's allowed in fluid mechanics. So maybe they took the easiest way, and the easiest way is the one where elevation is lowest. Zero meter, zero meter, then they go left here, one meter, so here we have six feet, six feet, nine feet. We are at 15 feet, but nothing like 40 feet. So maybe they wanted to go to the north part, which is lower in elevation, to reach eventually here 
uh, the valve and and seven six but i think they they won in that region let's have a look at the powerpoint again and yeah that's that's the that's the six me that's the um, two meter or like six feet here uh, th this is all this area is not very high in elevation so they may have facilitated that work rather than trying to get, dig through at 40 feet all the way that's maybe why they diverted it because this is zero feet basically that area here this is pretty much sea level if there was no of course if all the if it was two islands to begin with i don't know that's interesting isn't it all right i'll let you comment i think i'm done uh yes yes so i'll let you comment on this ah my intuition says i'm right the money pit again is here somewhere here and this flow of water is not hitting the money pit sorry for now we'll see i'd see you know there, there may be another there may be more pictures that i can that we can work out it's very smart the way they made the junction with the two pictures by having this glare matching in direction I'm, 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 I think I'll find others because I need to understand now what, or we need to understand what's happening here. So there must be a way they described what's happening and what's the purpose of the, of the trap door. Uh, we got it from one of the uh, brilliant, amazing, one of my favorite miniatures I commented about a year ago when I first discovered them, where they hide the vault mechanism in, in that picture with the knights and you also have La Hompe and you got everything in there. It's graphical. I, I don't have any geometry worked out yet. I may, but I, th phew, I think that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> Question also is why would they, why would they not go straight line here? Maybe they, they encounter some hard rock and it was either easier to go around. Maybe they really wanted to connect with the tunnel to make sure they were on the right direction because they were diverting. I don't know. But the fact that when you position them to the scale using Nolan's cross scale as your reference, you hit, you hit lamp, you hit the cone E, it seems to go underneath Nolan's cross at one point uh, because this is a straight line and it's, it, it goes. So is there work underneath cone E, cone D and going to the vault? Maybe, maybe the corridor that I, I drew in, I, I sketched in white goes there somehow at this point and then you got steps or uh, stairs or something i don't know but maybe this area has been worked out and that's where the pipe arrives and lands and it, re it registers valve d which is an important piece of equipment in the flood tunnel system of course i mean i let you think please comment thank you very much for watching love you all and subscribe if you have not it helps those ideas being propagated around the net. Thank you. Take good care. Love you all. Bye-bye.